Hello, hello, everybody out there on the interwebs. My name is Ivan, aka Scholar from JP Line Productions, and I'd like to welcome everybody to the inaugural edition of the Oddball Show, a podcast where we're going to focus on uh, poetry, hip hop, entertainment, sports, general shenanigans, hot topics, all that good stuff. Uh, right now, I'm going to pass it along to our MC for the night, Mr. Chad Parento from Oddball Magazine and Stone Soup Poetry. What's up, Chad? Thank you very much, Ivan. Uh, appreciate you. That very nice intro, very short and to the point. Uh, hopefully I can be half as succinct. You're off to a Where's great that? start. Where's that twice as succinct? Anyway, um, anyway, the professor and uh, Ivan, who just spoke, are uh, part of JP Line Productions, and there's a link on this uh, YouTube channel for jplimesproduction.com. I recommend you visit them, or you can just turn into the weekly J twist of JP Lime column, which is published every Friday at Oddball Magazine, oddballmagazine.com. And also a quick hello to uh, Jason Wright, who is the editor, publisher, founder of Oddball Magazine. How are you, Jason? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Not do doing pretty good. For, for a one-hour start time delay, I am, uh, I am still giddy and excited about doing this, and I hope all of you, um, especially fans of poetry and fans of gang publish, visit Oddball Magazine at oddballmagazine.com. Um, where we where we publish five days a week and have an arraignment of columns. In addition to a twist of J.P. Line, we hope to have uh, the latest installment of Janet Cormier's Ben Boozled No More tomorrow. As And hopefully if we get a Stone Soup feature um, finally announced tomorrow, we'll have the Stone Soup Servings column. So a lot of exciting stuff coming down the road and for the next few weeks, especially for National Poetry Month. And I am Chad Parento, and I host the weekly Stone Soup Poetry series. Uh, you can visit that website at stonesoupoetry.blogspot.com. And for our first, uh, for our inaugural issue of episode of Stone Soup Poetry, I mean for for Oddball Show, can you tell it's 11 o'clock at night? Um, for our inaugural episode of Odd, the Oddball Show, uh, we have something very poetry related, uh, the issue of uh, safe spaces. I almost wanted to call the episode one the safety dance, but uh, thankfully, <laughs> I vote, thankfully I voted myself out of that before I even brought it to you guys. I only include it now as a weird passive aggressive thing. <laughs> and my intro is... <laughs> Uh, for those of you who are just tuning in, um, it's been a giddy start of just figuring out um, that Google Hangouts don't work very well on all cell phones. Laptops are the new cell phone people. You hit it here first. <laughs> um, but now on to the formal introduction on the subject of safe spaces. The Boston poetry scene has had its share of controversy these past months. The concept of a space, safe space in spoken word venues is now a frequent topic of discussion amongst groups. But are safe spaces possible? What measures have been taken thus far to preserve them? How do they approach, how do people approach individuals whose behavior or actions are seen as counterproductive to safe spaces? And what if those people are prompted to fight back? I have in my possession right now, or rather in my browser window, um, a series of articles that have taken place. There's been a lot of stories that have been passing around locally in the scene, but nothing has made the news like this. Um, and this it comes from a Canadian website, thestar.com. Well-known poet banned from events in three cities over sexual harassment and assault allegations. And this concerns a poet that many of you in the poetry, or at least the slam poetry or performance poetry community might be familiar with, Greg Franson, Frankson, F-R-A-N-K-S-O-N, who goes by the stage name Ridlin. And when this uh, article was written, he, would, he had been banned effectively from three um, uh, poetry venues. The, capital, the Ottawa, Ottawa's Capital Poetry Collective, the Toronto Poetry Project, and British Columbia's Victoria Poetry Project. This is a very serious statement to the point that there was actual... Um, there was an actual statement put up in Spokane, which is a Spoken Word Canada website. The statement reads, and I'll be I'll bridge it as much as possible. On November 12, 2014, the Anti-Oppression Committee received a grievance filed against Greg Frankson, a.k.a. Ridland, pertaining to sexual assault and harassment. They held a meeting one week later on November 19th and brought their recommendations toward the Spokane's board of directors. Bottom line, the BOD unanimously voted that Greg Frankson received a lifetime receive a lifetime ban. 
let's 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 put the weight on that a lifetime ban from all Spokane sanctioned events. And keep in mind that Greg Frankson is someone who was on national public radio. He was actually part of uh, Canada TV. So this is a <clears throat> this is a serious sanction brought against a serious public figure, at least as far as the spoken word scene is concerned. What was the name of the TV? Uh, the TV show, I believe, it's a, I believe it's a game show. Um, I don't have. He was on CBC's Here and Now, and he also appeared on a, as a contestant on the CBC show Canada's Smartest Person. And he was also a guest speaker at the recent provincial uh, NDP convention held in Toronto. They have a show called Canada's Smartest Person. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this, is TV this is Canadian TV. Let's move on. Um, how, how smart can he be if he got banned for for some poetry? Well, the the. On with Ritalin, man? Who wants to be a millionaire, man? The up, the up, the uh, the unfortunate side effect of all this is that um, uh, Greg Franson, Frankson actually sued two members of the uh, boards of of the venues responsible for reporting on him and banning him uh, to the tune of three hundred thousand dollars. Now, given I I feel a personal attachment to this story because. In the Boston poetry scene, we have had our share of people that need to be addressed, people that have been banned. I think every venue has a private story that they don't really share with people that you know will remain nameless because we don't want to publicly shame anyone, but just sometimes things happen. Sometimes people walk away from venues not knowing how to behave, and I speak from personal experience you know, as a poetry host. Sometimes people come back, and they're better than ever, and everything is water under the bridge. Hmm. This is the first time... Um, that I've read of someone um, taking it to the point of suing two organizers, Ruth Ann and Rusty, for three hundred thousand dollars. Well, it was a def defamation of character, right? They they exactly. accused him of sex, like twenty some odd women all got together and said he's sex. He's like the Bill Cosby of poetry, like sexual harassment. Wow. You said that, not me, but no, I, no, 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 I, I wouldn't disagree. I, I wouldn't, disagree. Saying, I wouldn't disagree either. He is. That's, that's 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 essentially what happened, right? A lot of a lot of women started complaining about it got together, and I don't know who led the charge, but they 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 pretty much said, all right, well, he gropes us, and he says inappropriate things, and you know, I mean, it was it's a sexual harassment thing, right? It's all for libel. Was it his lyrics? What was he doing? Was it his lyrics were offensive? It was all. It, it was apparently. It's. It goes further than his lyrics. It goes. To, they included uh, charges of sexual assault, not legal charges, but accusations within the community. And ah. and as a result of airing this online, which I don't know any group that has actually done this and named a person, especially not someone of this. Uh, let's just say celebrity status, for lack of a better term. Um, this is the first time I've ever heard of it, and this is the first time I've heard of a poet suing each individual for $150,000 in libel and defamation of character. Damn, He's a well-known so poet. This wasn't like some guy who just decided to say, hey, I'm going to go do an open mic. Uh, let me read something I wrote when I was 15 years old. Like This guy is into the poetry <laughs> scene. He spearheaded a lot of poetry groups and activities up there. Like He's a major player in Canada's poetry scene. Yes, I'm not going to. Um, I'm not going to pretend. I know. I'm not going to pretend I know everything about the um, the Canadian poetry scene. But I think anyone would agree that if you're banned from three venues of that magnitude, your career, shall we say, as a poet, is severely curtailed. Yeah, yeah Toronto, <laughs> Vancouver, and uh, and where was it? Toronto, Vancouver, and Montreal was it? Ottawa. Ottawa. Damn. Yes. That's like half of Canada right there, man. And, oh. and I mean, I'm not a, you know, I, 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 I have no idea what the laws are up there or how everything works, but I would imagine that, you know, if, if, if you've got sexual harassment on your record, like, it's not just about the poetry. Like, this guy's going to have trouble finding a job, possibly, or, you know yeah. what I mean? It's Jail it's, time, it's, maybe. Well, yeah, I mean, if, if he gets convicted, but, I mean, even if well, he doesn't, it's like the word gets around, you know. Well, keep that... Well, keep in mind, keep keep in mind what's going on right now. And sorry to interrupt you, uh, Professor, but um, keep in mind that what's going on is just a banning. There's no formal charges. There's no criminal well, charges being pressed against them. No one has filed charges of any kind, right? Not at this point. Which is kind of the thing about the defamation of character. If you're not willing to, you know, and I don't want to be the one that, that blames a victim of assault, but if you're not willing to file charges against somebody, how can you abandon them across the entire country and in the community of of poets, if you're not willing to say, hey, this person did this. And then the other thing is, I, you know, as far as the reports go, they're, they're, they're remaining anonymous, right? 
As far as I know, the people making the claims are made anonymous. I think they're known to the spoke uh, to the to certain members of the uh, of the poetry committees in Canada, but I don't think they've been, their names have been revealed to any news site. Chat. Yeah. Chat. Uh, I think we need a female perspective here. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and it gives me great pleasure, and I'm sorry for the belated introduction, Miss. Um, I'd like to introduce someone who uh, is an accomplished poet, a noted activist uh, locally in Boston, and the edit uh, editor, disclaimer, um, this is a Stone Soup publication, upcoming uh, spoon, a Stone's Throw editor for the next issue, um, and, and, of course, um, not only... Um, not only accomplished feature poet, but she also um, helped to organize her own fundraiser at Stone Soup this past April 6th, Monday, and um, was it was very successful. It was gives me great too. pleasure to if very fun. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Miss Didi Delgado. Hey guys, how are those clapping now? Great. Uh, <laughs> believe me, Didi, it's 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 much better than the canned la canned applause that uh, Jason I know is like chomping at the bit to use. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Like this, is, this is a bit of a heavy topic, guys. Um, it, I think it's finding a balance. If you're asking from my perspective and my viewpoint, finding a balance between um, how do we protect the victims who, or you know, the alleged victims who say that, hey, um, you know, I don't feel comfortable now coming to this establishment because this person is coming here, um, and then and then saying, okay, well, what proof do you have? And I, you know, I, Chad, maybe you can allude more to it, but me as a female, I would be like, oh my god, is that what happened? And then I think that there's a place where people get stuck at. Like, what do I do next? And I think that a lot of people are just going ahead and doing the whole, well, he's probably guilty until someone can prove otherwise. <laughs> and I think that that's where we run into a problem with now what constitutes <clears throat> this safe space that we're talking about. So and not only, not, only that, not only that, Didi, but I also think that you know the fight, the the fights that that seem to keep on happening. I mean, I think the Toronto, the, this business in Canada is a sign of uh, upcoming escalation. I mean, not that this has happened at, at all locally, but it could very well feasibly happen someday that someone gets called out publicly, and that person actually has the legal know-how and perhaps the resources to fight back. And I keep on thinking of the two Canadian, uh, pe the two uh, the two people who are being sued. And these two are probably, I would guess, just knowing from my own personal experience, they're probably two people who help hold up the poetry uh, scene, you know, on, on their own spines. And if they get destroyed, what's going to happen to the rest of the scene? Yeah, I guess that's my concern, too, um, as far as, like, making a parallel between what's going on in Canada right now and then um, bringing that back home to what's going on in Boston. It's like, you know, it's, it's a very teeter-tottering line that we're doing here when we're just making up um, our, the rules as we go along and not having a community process. I mean, because like you just said, those people, very much like yourself, other um, poetry house and slam masters, are pillars in this poetry community. Like, you know, if you're going to this place, hey, you got to know this person in order to get, you know, in. And so I guess my only concern is, is like, at what point does it become community process when you're making a decision for the entire community, you know? And who makes the decision? Definitely. I guess that, that would be my second question, <laughs> so. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's what came to mind to me. Like, who, like in Canada... I mean, like I said, I don't know how it works up there. I don't know how the poetry scene works up there, but a bunch of people got together, and you know what I mean. This guy is, you know, he's he's SOL. Like, what what ha what what happened in Boston? What happens in Boston? What's happening in you know, yeah, what's in our on? local poetry scene? That's that's uh, you know, that's made safe space a hot topic. The tragedy. Well, the tra he just threw it out there. The tragedy. Of I'm, just, I'm just saying, like, let's get to the nitty gritty here. Like, you know, Canada's great and all, but you know, I don't. Oh, I've only been there once. <laughs> I live. I went there twice. I have. I have not been there at all. And technically, uh, oh, yeah, French, I'm, I'm French Canadian. Canadian so it's it's technically, my motherland. Place. I've never been there. Is that your mom I have a there? Canadian penny in my in my piggy bank. <laughs> there you go. So you went there. 
Um, what's, the, what's going on in the Boston poetry scene? A whole lot of hoopla who. Um, if it's not, you know, I think that, um, I, I'll say this. I think that there have been several incidents, not just one and not certainly not just two, um, where people have felt offended, where people feel unsafe, where people feel attacked. Um, and, you know, these are, these are words. Um, like, and, and not to make light of it, but I think that we also need to be cognizant that the decisions we make towards the actual houses themselves or the people, um, like if I were to use Chad, use Chad for an example, there was an incident uh, that happened where a, a poet just got up and was doing his feature and then someone from the audience who's also probably a part of the show, you know, made some statements that probably didn't reflect the whole entire venue. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it would be one thing if people were to get up and say, you know what, I'm not dealing with stone soup anymore. It's another thing to deal with that person specifically. And I think that in Boston, to me, if I was to look at it, that's the problem with all the major houses. Cantab. Uh, Lizard Lounge, Haley House Slam, if you can feel it, you can speak it. Instead of dealing with the individuals, we make assumptions about the whole entire venue. And I think right, that's right, what, where right. it becomes very dangerous. So I, I would definitely agree with that. I don't know how it is for other locations, but I would say that you, it just being a, being a host of Stone Soup for 10 years, it's just been a very, it feels like... I've had I've had my very I've had my degrees of uh, problem various issues at Stone Soup and um, the one ex the one thing that makes uh, what happened recently that Didi alluded to with a person who was technically part of Team Stone Soup uh, kind of different from other issues that have been happening around Stone Soup is that that as Didi pers as Didi said that person was a um, was to, was a staff member, and it was bec it became a bigger problem of I don't want this person representing Stone Soup, and also making feel people feel ashamed or upset to be there. Whereas a lot of what's been going on in the scene abroad is uh, most is amongst um, performers, performer performers, yeah. open micers uh, pitting themselves against each other. And this is not this is not new, but it seems to have turned up in intensity in recent years. I know one particular venue. Um, I did give one person who was a venue host a chance to speak, but it was uh, I, I asked I asked this person too late in the eleventh hour, so I don't want to give names of the venue or the person away. But I do know that there were there was one particular venue where they had people who going up week after week and basically antagonizing the audience, but through their work. And it was, and it was a challenge. It was definitely a challenging of ideas, and it was definitely the performers' intent to go up on the open mic and be abrasive towards um, the audience's overall politics and general ideas and and and, and social leanings. All right, so, so all right, so I, I, I got some questions. Oh, go ahead. What happened? What happened? Like you, yes. you guys, you guys are kind of, you know. I feel like you're 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 alluding to a particular incident or a particular uh, set of incidents, but like I I don't need to know who I don't even necessarily need to know where. But what was the attack? Who felt offended and why? What are those you know the 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 the, the crowd's political overall uh, being or whatever? What what's who who got offended and why? Chad, why? I think you can I think you can say that it was. Uh, this person may have went after certain college students, literary poets, what have you. So he went um, after a college, like a group of college kids, like a, because they go to a particular, like a rival school. Was it that? I, I think I can. I think I can say that the person that the person I'm talking about this venue was, let's say, very right wing leaning. It went right wing leaning, and okay. kind of went after the left, the leftist, the left of the crowd, which I think you'd agree. I with see. I see. The majority, but he, but the person never attacked. Oh, Boston, yeah. The person never attacked the, the individuals per se. The, the person the eventually was kind of general, dude. What's that? It seems rather general. <laughs> yeah, come on, get into it, man. Talk about it. Oh, Jesus. Uh, basically, 
Yeah. All right. So, all right. So, who got offended? It's like yeah. poetry wars over here. Well, the short answer of this is that everybody got offended at this person. This this guy. This is a guy. And incidentally, I did feature him at Stone Soup once, but I did that for like to, to try and spark conversation, discussion. But uh, I, I used to call him the mixer poet because anytime he went up to the mic, the bartender would turn the mixer on or like mix a drink or like, turn something on. <laughs> can I ask you this? Can I ask you this? Is he the dude? Have you guys seen Top Gun? Is he the dude in the suit that reads the 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 uh, <laughs> businessman? No, that's, that's another I'm incident. Afraid. That's another incident and another <laughs> person. You want to add your helmet, Donnie? <laughs> oh my! I can't stand you guys at all. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Didi, you know exactly what I'm thinking at any moment. Anyway, the, the point being is that this poet kept on this way for years. He kept on this way challenging the poets and probably offending their sensibilities for years. But it wasn't okay. until, as far as I know from the rumor mill, and I'd love to have the person on to discuss it, but um, I'll just say this. The poet basically, as far as I know from the rumor mill, offended or and, and or attacked someone else on stage, and that was it. Well, well, like, no, so that person for, I gotta say, I kind of like this guy. Whatever this is, unless they say some shit that's really bad, like they're offending everybody. This sounds like Eminem. This sounds well, this like uh, well, like I, that we would embrace in Well, well this, this is like it's who I think it is. It's definitely not Eminem. <laughs> 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 I, I would hope that Eminem. I'm just saying, it sounds like it sounds like they're pissing everybody off. Which is uh, not generally a bad thing for. Well, this is a person. Jackson, going... Jackson Pollock definitely pissed a lot of people off for a long time, and then it turned out he was actually brilliant, right? Years later. You know what I'm saying? I just. I don't know if the test of times will work as well against this guy, you know. But then again, I, I but but then again, I don't. I could say the same for any of us here, myself doubly. But well, here's the thing. So so it sounds to me like you know, homeboy, homegirl, uh, you know, whatever, home poet. Um, home poet, like he, he, you know, not he, a home poet. <laughs> <laughs> Road poet. You know, like, right. So, so you know, so said poet goes up there. Said poet goes up there, and he generally pisses people off because of their views, you know, political life, what have you. And then one day, he goes after somebody specifically, and, and that was it. The and, that, and that was hits the fan. And was it in a slam? It was during an open mic, as far as I know. Was he banned from the establishment in Cambridge? Yes. yes. Hey! <laughs> Don't give me banned. <laughs> you like how they're all context clues. <laughs> Shout outs to the bridge, Cambridge. <laughs> <laughs> There's no poetry in Boston proper. What are you kidding? No. Oh. <laughs> yes, I'm just saying. I mean, no weekly venue, really, but. Um, yeah, Wait, it, can we. Can, <laughs> all right, so the, I, I wanted to talk to a little bit. I don't want to shift course, but I just want to. There's a. A new idea about uh, uniting all of the the open mics and stuff through a schedule. Uh, do you do you know something about that? Like uh, like this sketch, I think is what it's called, and you can you can find out where every open mic is uh, Monday through Friday. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? I thought I saw it on Facebook. Are, are they going to be so, safe space open mics or? Yeah. I can't even deal with. So th it's a couple of things going on, and I've been like keeping my ear to it. Um, I think that maybe back in September, um, Kaylee O'Keefe from Flatline Poetry and I had been I like talking her. She's about fantastic. Like, ra randomly talking about like how do how do we get to all of these events, right? Like how do we plan to go to all of these events, and then like having to like. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Having to choose between which event you, you like the most. So we had talked about doing a poetry calendar. No one did anything with it. So I did a template, sent it out. You know, there might have been some discourse about who had rights to this, whatever. But in any event, the poetry calendar was started. And um, it's not really comprehensive, comprehensive, but it pretty much has anything between Boston and Cambridge. Now I've seen something that's an actual app. I don't know what that usability is going to look like, but I think the whole reason behind the schedule came out from people not really knowing that there were more than one or two poetry houses hmm. or poetry venues to go to throughout the week. Um, and now it's a little bit more spread out than when I first started coming on the scene. So. When was that, Duty? Let's not talk about the past, okay? okay. Like, let's not talk about my personal... <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> so, so you're saying there, there's like a schedule of, uh, that you can find online that shows where all the uh, all the mics and features are in Boston, so you can plan accordingly every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yep. Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Uh, for right now, I re I don't remember what the name of the app is. I would have to look at my timeline. But for right now, you can check out Mass Poetry Calendar. You can, it's Google searchable, or you can uh -huh. just email me. Oh my God, it's ddelgado at gmail dot com. Is that your and email? I'll Wait, it's oh my god, ddelgado at gmail dot com. Oh my god, it's ddelgado at gmail. Oh, I love that. That's my favorite email address I've ever. This is the best. That is that is that is seriously the best email address I've ever heard. So just Didi Delgado at Gmail. No, it's oh, it's oh my god, it's Didi Delgado at Gmail.com. <laughs> oh my really god, if the I joke has been run to the ground at Gmail.com. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. So we were talking. Go ahead. Right. I was just so all right, but, but but no, I I was serious. Like when I asked, all right, you, you know, you've got a bunch of you got a bunch of spots in and around Greater Boston. You know, you want to increase the visibility so everybody knows, you know, that there are more than just two or three. But it's is that part of the problem? Like with the whole safe space thing, not enough people are spreading themselves out, so they're going to the same like like people with tensions are ending up at the same spots like week in and week out, or That's or a good not? Question. That's a great question. Let's talk about that. Do you Tell mind me. if I jump in on that? Please, I, I really... We're waiting on you. Oh, <laughs> well, excuse me. Let me fix my ponytail then. Okay. So listen. <laughs> uh, I think that what the problem is, is in Boston is that there are very, like, they're, like, it's all sectional. There are so many silos going on in Boston, and the poetry scene being one of the main ones. So if, if I had to, like, put my own two cents, maybe even a nickel on this, yeah. I would say that the Boston poetry community right now is split geographically between mm -hmm. Boston and Cambridge um, and then Cambridge is kind of winning right uh, it's split um, with race mm -hmm. uh, so you have some spaces and I'm definitely not gonna mention names but it's right. a general consensus around black and Latinos where they will not go um, really? and if they do it's only to prove a point um, and then you have Sexuality and sexual orientation. So, I mean, that's definitely a d divide because you have individuals who feel like, you know what, I don't feel comfortable in this space. I'm going to create my own space. We'll put a stamp on this, call it a safe space. Um, and then what happens is then they open, right? They call it open safe spaces. And so then the people that they're trying to protect themselves from come to these spaces and just are themselves, right? Um, and heteronormative, whatever you want to call it, right. and then that's where the problem comes in when you open the safe spaces. I think people should just, if you want my honest opinion, mm -hmm. if people are very much concerned about what someone gets up on the mic and says, everyone should have a closed mic, <laughs> and it should be, listen, these yeah, are all the only. things we're not going to accept, and these are all the things that we're all proud of, you know what I'm saying? And I, I think that that goes for anybody, whether it's the divide of sexual orientation... Um, right. You know, geography. Uh, you can't be from Cambridge if you're going to come to. I mean, because that's what I really feel like. I feel like if we were to put the money on the table right now and see who's got it, there's no such thing as a safe space, especially in Boston. So. Right. Right. Um, well, let's um, let's let's elaborate on something that you said. I, I think that was very interesting. I think you're the right. first person to really say it and say it at, in, in in such a way that uh, basically one person who sets up a safe space ends up inviting people who have a completely different idea of what a safe space is. Right, because if you think about it, like you said, I think one of you, I don't know who said it, to, I think it was Ivan, like, do all people get together and and then, like, just happen to be in this one space, right? I think that's right. what happens, yeah. is that, like, look what happened at a very popular 18-plus year establishment in, in Cambridge proper. Um, you know, there was, a, there was an attack made from one poet to another, right? And then everybody got upset with the poet, I mean, with the slam master, and said, you know what? We're not coming to this establishment anymore because you refuse to do anything about this poet who continues to be d X, Y, and Z, right? right. And so you have a, th those group of people now have, have gone somewhere else, matriculated to two other houses, blah, blah, blah. But then that's what you have. So when you go into their spaces now, right, it's mm -hmm. open and welcome. But how open and welcome because now who holds the space? The power shift has obviously gone elsewhere, which is fine. But then I think that those in power also need to be aware that uh, they are now minimizing safe spaces for others. Like, does that make sense? 
I no, it, it does. It does. No, it absolutely does. A, a couple of things come to mind. Earlier, you said something about, uh, you know, Boston, Cambridge, two hot, you know, hot spots for poetry. Cambridge is winning. I just want to say, I would love any listeners out there from Boston to tweet us and or you know chat with us live while we're here. If you're hearing this syndicated, tweet us at JP Lime at Oddball Magazine and you know. Defend Boston if you're out there. I just want to, you know, I, I just want to put that out there. Let's 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 allow everybody to speak their piece. Um, secondly, um, as far as like some of the divides, you mentioned sexual orientation, um, ethnicity. You know, black, Latinos, uh, you know, whites. I'm assuming maybe even Asians. Um, are, are those? Is is that really what the sources of the tensions are? I mean, is is there more? I mean, is you know, are are those two of the more pressing, more you know, delicate tensions oh, no, I, that are that yeah. are hitting the community um, right now? Go ahead. Yeah, my bad. So th those are. I think that those would be the. Oh, let's not speak about it. Let's just like you know, like let's I mean, just be. But why can't we speak no, about it? No, no. Let me finish. Yeah. I think that I'm saying like those are the quote unquote. I do want to validate your question. Like those yeah, are the yeah. quote unquote. Let's not really speak about it. But let's say why we don't like going to this establishment just because we don't like it. But no, you're not really talking about those sensitive issues. But I would say the biggest, right, spoken out loud that people can verify is the actual art itself. So poetry in Boston slash Cambridge is divided further by the fact that some people do not consider spoken word artists poets and some people consider literary poets boring. I mean, you know, so you have the whole the academia, the academia versus street artists, like, you know, and I think also the biggest thing that trumps all of that, if you really want to break it down, because that's what we do at the Society of Urban Poetry, is that it's all divided underscore by space. Lack of space in Boston. Gotcha. We're all gotcha. clamoring for like bars and speakeasies in someone's apartment and it's just crazy. There's no place in Boston like home for poets. Like, you know, so that's interesting. So yeah, people say Boston's a small city. This sounds like that's a situation where it's actually negatively affecting what's going on in the poetry scene but w one thing I wanted uh, wanted to mention Chris was touching on earlier how you know he liked the guy or the the poet you know guy girl whatever who was out there uh, you know uh, pissing everybody off on stage and you know Chris and I come from you know the uh, the hip hop background um, and mm -hmm. in hip hop you know you, you a lot of people come up as battle rappers does it guarantee success no but you know some some have you know, come up as battle rappers and made it, some haven't, but that's one of the things that, you know, that's like a core element of hip-hop. Um, so right. I, I just think it's interesting how, you know, you've got this issue with people, uh, you know, with the poetry scene, um, not not exactly, you know, kind of feeling its way through how to deal with tensions and, you know, people going at each other, et cetera, et cetera, um, you know, versus a genre like hip-hop, which is very much based on poetry amongst a lot of other things, but, you know, like, the rhymes are rooted in poetry. Right. Um, it's 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 the exact opposite. People want to see battles. People embrace, you know, somebody who's willing to go up there and say whatever the heck they want to say. Now, that said, when you attack someone personally, I can understand it getting, you know, you know, Shit gets real, so to speak. Um, so you know, th those are some of the thoughts that came to mind. I know. Uh, Chase that point. From all I'll go, go go ahead, Chris. Yep. No, I'm sorry, but still to that point. I mean, that's yep. that's something that it gets real, but that's that's the whole genre of hip hop that exists unto itself, battle rap, and, and it gets very personal, inches away from each other's face. You know, like that's a that, it, that, it, that exists. You know, and, and it's crazy to watch because it's built on that concept of getting under somebody's skin as much as possible. No, you know, absolutely. You know, and, and, most and, good. and most people would have accepted JP, uh, Ivan's definition of rap battle as pertaining to slam as well, you know. You yeah, yeah, I agree. So, so, I mean, if you know you're going to a slam poetry event, why are you mad if something goes down? I feel like slam you know, if, you, if you hear something that, you know, you don't, you don't necessarily want to hear, like. All right, so we have the, so we have the, 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 you have the problem. The problem is that we are we are sort of divided between uh, poet spaces, poetry. Uh, you know, uh, all these different things that we all we all have. You know, or, uh, but what is the solution? Where can we all come together as as one as poets 
who are both, uh, you know, either street poets, slam poets, who are also academic poets, and where's that space going to be in Cambridge or Boston where we can all get together and vibe instead of feeling like this is this is this is like a like a you know like what's the word I'm looking for like I don't know like I don't want to feel that I can't go to a certain event because I'm because I'm because I write down my words and I don't slam them. You know what I mean? And I wouldn't say I'm I'm necessessarily an academic poet. Like ex exclusive almost? Like right, right. I don't feel left I, out. I, I feel like there there is a little I mean I think we gotta realize that as as slam poets and, and people who are who are poetry slams and stuff, there is a big divide between academic poetry and like there's a whole like we're 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 fighting amongst amongst ourselves when there's a whole I academic poetry and stuff that are in their own their, their own realm. They're in their own realm of and, and they're the ones who are getting published and stuff, and we, we should all unify. Like, poets should unite in general, not and they shouldn't discriminate over anything. Um, Chad, and, what do you think? You know what I mean? Like, what's, where is the, where's the spot? Where can we start this instead of, you know, first of all, we have to re realize what the problem is, and then we got to fix it, and then we got to move on and keep it going. I think Monday was a good start, and I'm not trying to throw my shit in there, but Monday was an excellent start. I think you just have to do it. Monday I think was you fantastic. just have to do it. Like, you just have to say, you know what, people, get your shit together. Um, hello, I need, like, five literary poets and five spoken word artists, and we're just going to mix it up. Like, And I think that people are actually receptive to that. You know, people will always have their opinions, I think. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But it, when, when you ask, like, what's an ideal space that we might be missing, maybe that hasn't been created yet. I mean, I, right. I, I don't, and I go to everything. And if anybody wants to contest that, I mean, literally, you can at me at Soup Poets on Twitter. Um, yeah. I go to everything. And I've not seen a space where the two worlds can collide. And another thing on that side note I spoke with someone very prominent in the Boston literary poetry community, um, and she said when I was telling her the things that were going on in in like you know the spoken word scene, she's like, I would have never, I would never have thought we don't go through things like that at all. And I I thought that that was interesting, and I'm right. sure Chad can shed some light on it because you travel in those circles, so. Oh, I'm a very busy man nowadays, and it's harder for me to travel in those circles. But what, you know, when I did more extensively, I kind of, I, I kind of, you know, I did it basically walking. I start. I was kind of the opposite of what a lot of people did. A lot of people started at Stone Soup and moved on to the Cantab because Stone Soup was first. It started over 30 years ago, and the Slam actually got started Stone Soup at one of the old Cambridge bookstores who and its name eludes me unfortunately at this point but it's no longer it no longer exists but Patricia Smith and Michael Brown bought, brought their game to Jack's venue and then eventually branched off but I know that there's I know that there's a lot of uh, history and that's probably one of the first things that people need to understand is that history still dictates a lot of things I mean yes there's academics who think slam poets are not really doing poetry, although God, God help them if they still think that. I don't, I don't even know. Um, I don't even know. I don't even know who thinks that now, even amongst the academics that I know. And 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 yes, some slam poets think academic poets are boring. But I see Tom Daly at the Cantab slam it every night, and he's as academic as they come, and he gets uh -huh. all but a standing ovation. But there's also a lot of prejudices that go towards the venues. There are people who, when I first took over Stone Soup, had grudges against uh, against Cantab people, that when I got a Cantab open mic that I liked very much to feature, there were so many straightened up backs when that happened. It was it was like, it, it could have been the most radical thing I had done for, for the venue in like 10 years, and all I did was invite a friend, and I never thought it was going to be a problem. It, it, was, it was absolutely ridiculous to see the vibe, and eventually people trusted me and said, it's good, it's good. But there was still that kind of prejudice there, and even come even came up when the Cantab celebrated, I think, their fifteenth year or something like that. And um, people called in to say, "Hi, I was with Jack Powers and Stone Soup, and you know we were here when the Slam first took scene, and I'm I'm sitting there embarrassed, going like, Why are you still bringing this up? Performance poetry is here. I like performance poetry. Slam is a marketing strategy." There, I said it. You know, slam is separate from performance poetry. Performance poetry, when it's good, it's as amazing as anything I've heard from the academics. 
Why yeah. is that? Why is that prejudice still there? We, I mean, Jack wow, is wow. Jack. Jack Powers is dead. He's been dead for five years. I he he did a lot of good, but he also brought a lot of prejudices to the table though, that people still feel sometimes every now and again. And and Michael Brown's not even part of the can't have anymore. Patricia Smith comes down once a year to perform. These people who had their grudges are gone. Leave it yeah. alone. Leave it alone. And it's it's very hard to feel that way. And there's like ageism towards like the old guard, even though the young guard is starting to become long in the tooth. You know, it, like these things can't <laughs> last. These things these things can't last much longer. You know, the right. young guard's going to come in, and the old guard's not going to see it coming. And the old guard's going to be like, "What happened?" And the cycle could begin again, or it could get a lot better. Chad, well, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. What, what does one in the tooth mean? <laughs> one in the tooth. I was yeah. yeah, just a, just another just another euphemism for age, old age. Y yeah, apparently. So, <laughs> old ages are one in the tooth. Why can't they? Well, be I said two? I said long. I said long, long, in, the the tooth. Tooth. <laughs> long in the tooth. Long in the tooth. You said one in the tooth. <laughs> I don't even know what one in the tooth means. Long in the tooth, dude. Oh my god. It Where, sounds so. Yeah. It sounds so it nasty. It sounds like though. they suffer from gum disease if someone was long in the tooth. It, it just sounds, sounds like a nineteen fifties like dude, we're not you're not that much older than I am, like <laughs> it, sound, it sounds vaguely dirty, like you don't know it's one in the tooth, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like what the hell? Well, can I just can I just kinda like uh please, refine what please I was do, trying to say? Do. Yeah. I Thank guess you. what I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that the poets that we run with need to unite together, find a spot, and I like the idea of academic poets and slam poets at different venues all over Boston. And Cambridge, like Dee Dee said, that's a do great you, idea. Do you agree you that? A lot uh, of things, I think. Like that's a that's a what what fabulous what? I said Dee Dee says a lot of good things. I think. Oh, I was I was reading the comments. Yeah. I was reading the comments. Okay, so like fabulous, right? Like I'm definitely into rap, even though like I'm black, like and I shouldn't be, right? <laughs> so like. So Fabulous, you know, he has this lyric and this song, and he's like, I came from no space that wasn't safe. Now it's no space in a safe space. Like, you know, and I think that that's, that's funny when you parallel, like, like no what we're going through. Still, yeah, yeah, it's a little bit ridiculous. His wordplay is disgusting on that. Yeah, I just want to let you know. Yeah. But, you know, and it's true. I think that I, I take it back what I said. There, there is a safe space in Boston. Let me, let, me, let me explain. There is a safe place in Boston uh, for poets. It's called in your head, right? Oh. It's like you and your journal and your thoughts, right? Because at the end of the day, you might get people who feel similarly safe in a space that you're in, but at some point, those people are also too going to break off and start to feel like, well, this is what's going on, you know? I, I, so it's never going to end if we can't come to a general consensus. And I think that's what we try to do with the open and honest discussion between poets because you can see very quickly on, even though we put up an agenda... Even though we had, like, you know, like a word bank, people thought it was very preschool. But then we spent, like, 40 minutes trying to explain to other people what these words meant. And had we just took the time in the beginning to say, what does it mean to you, then we could have, like, given feedback to each other, you know. I saw I that. Did. I saw that in your notes how you, I, I, you were running it, right? You were the, the chair, so to speak. Listen, let's not talk about who runs things. Um, I, I was saying, you were the one that said, let's define everything. And they were yeah, just like, oh, because I, I was tired and of then, the And complaint. then a half hour later, they were like, misogyny was misinterpreted, and everybody was like battling about definitions, and you were just like, hey, this is why we should have taken the time at the beginning to... Right, just and, it's, and it's really fine. because everyone, I think, is like vested in the... I think, I, if I would be honest, I wouldn't put blame on anyone. I would just say that people are very much vested... In, ha in feeling heard and having their thoughts heard, which is yeah. cool, but you can't be selfish with it. And that's what ended up happening. And then no one got their point across, and we spent three hours having a good conversation, but not... I, I really would like to have a second one. For our, because, like this one. For our listeners, I think we should elaborate <laughs> because we have a lot of private... Uh, you know, chats going back and forth, and a lot of documents of research. But what Dee Dee's alluding to is uh, a conversation that a meeting that took place in uh, Boston uh, back in early January, actually before the blizzard took place. Based yeah, it was on, on the sixth. Yeah, no, the third. <laughs> third, based on events that took place um, in a prestigious. Um, we've already alluded to in the past, but based on a prestigious poetry venue, where yes, one poet did attack 
the other poet's words. You know, it was it was a war of words. It was definitely a war of ideals. It's a battle. And it like was an battles. unannounced. It was an unannounced battle. It wasn't exactly. It wasn't meant to be a battle. Ones. In the first right, Chris? It was, I mean, I mean, if you if you don't know what the it was definitely a preemptive about. strike. It was definitely a sneak right, attack. Right. When, and the person and the and the offended poet definitely wasn't expecting it. And neither yeah, were a lot of people in the audience. Yeah, for it. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I would have dug it. I would have dug it. I like it. It depends how, how offensive it was. If it was like super offensive and it just hit someone like me personally, I mean, it's the, different than offensive, you know. I was, I was, like, it was something that was like that was directed at someone to cut them down in front of a lot, like an audience, to make them look stupid or feel feel embarrassed or whatever. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of you know, that's it's, centered it's, it's douchey. It's, it's douchey. It's douchey. Oh, it's douchey. Oh, I it's, just want to battle rap. Battle rap is like playing with lyrics and stuff. I mean, you know, no. Like, no. No, Jason. Jason. This was very cool. Oh, I know no. battle raps. I am. I know hip hop really a lot. No, Jason. This was very different. It would be one thing if someone were like, okay, this is this is very much. If we're talking about it. battle rap here, you're talking about. I'm like, I I'm the proud owner of all 42. Uh, instances of street wars by P. Cutter, okay? So, like, I have all this underground. <laughs> and what happens in battle rap, especially underground, is someone makes a diss record, and you mm -hmm. know who it's for, right? Mm -hmm. And then that other person comes back with another diss record. The response, the response poem, or the response uh, piece. Fine, <laughs> but that's not what happened here, at all. Yeah, what the happened? Person so the person basically made a poem. This person, the the other person, it offended, stewed over it for months about how I don't like how you know she's a butch black female and she's saying you know what? That's what okay. I'm trying to get at. What happened? Talk about so it. Talk so about basically, it. Basically, basically, she's turning two people. Uh, well, I'm not the gonna, tooth. Well, right. also because of because of the sensitivity, I'm also not going to name names. But pretty much, if you're in Boston, you know what happened. So yeah. basically what happened is is that this wonderful young artist wrote a poem and she was talking about her personal experiences uh, dealing with men and dealing with her own self and individual uh, individuality. Touché. So this person that always comes to these venues has been stewing over her poem for months. Like it's not fair that she gets to write about that and I can't say nothing. He writes a response poem to something she probably may not have known, and let's just be honest, let's give her the benefit of the doubt, she may not have known she offended him or any other person. She was now, just it, sharing her thought. She didn't, I mean, her poem wasn't at all indirect, you know what I mean? Right. Like, it wasn't like a direct, hey, you sitting in the front chair, shade, right here in like the that. But, but even indirect, right. like shade, none of that, it was just like, this is what I went through, yeah, interpreted exactly. as you will. And I think yeah. that as poets, we all write about our personal experiences, yeah. so fine, right? Do I think it, that it was right or wrong based on the other person's perception? That's not for me. That's between her and that person. But I definitely think that a lot of people in the community said to him, hey, you should go talk to her then if this is how you're feeling. That conversation never happened. And that's where when you talk about battle rap, he did the response poem to something she didn't even know was offensive, right? And so right, yeah. that came as a shock and a surprise to not only her, but his intended audience didn't even know what the hell was going on. Right, so right. Well, like a, it became like a Salem witch trial. Like, how dare you? It's it's not even cute. It's not even like something downloadable. Like right. you, you know. So I think that's not what we. Not necessarily uh, taking, saw, not necessarily saw, taking a about. devil's not necessarily taking a devil's advocate view here, but you could also say that the pers the said person who was you know firing all guns blazed at this poet kind of got punished because he did it as part of the slam, and of course he probably got like ones that night. I think the whole crowd condemned him. Yeah, I think that, that that's, you know, I think that's what the problem I had was coming into it, is that, okay, so he didn't win anything, and he obviously is undergoing public disapproval, right? So fine, but why are we like um, now bludgeoning the slam space for it? Like, you know, and then you you bring this up at the meeting, like, well, you know, I don't think that Slam Masters should get involved in Slams, and another Slam Master somewhere else in Cambridge goes, well, you know, I would never allow it, but you are you haven't been there, and, and I've been offended by some of the poems that are on that stage, too, so, I mean, what do I do? Like, I think it's individuality, but I think that we all need to have a general consensus, and I don't think that that can happen. It'll always be these silos that we're in, which is cool, right? If that's what people want to do. But I also think that people shouldn't complain when when they go to another place and then something happens. Then, if that's what we're gonna do. Yeah. 
Right, right, which which I would agree with. And um, like one thing you said, like you know, you're just just comparing it to hip hop, Chris. Chris, I want you to jump in here. Like, you know, this person or the 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 female, she she wrote a poem. She didn't know she may have offended homeboy, and then he you know he brings it out, and you know he he. You know, he, he, he does a little battle poem, for lack of a better word. Everybody's there. She's feeling embarrassed. It's not fair. So in hip-hop, it's, it's possible where, you know, somebody will write a diss record about another rapper who he thought he was talking about, but, you know, it wasn't necessarily the case. Battles get started that way all the time. The difference is, you know, when you do a diss record, it's a record. You're not right in front of the person you're dissing. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, so uh, my question was, was it a slam event? It doesn't sound like it was. It was uh, a slam event. It was a slam. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So that, all right, all right. So there was some context for it, but it's still kind of messed up. Chris, what do you think? Here, yeah, here's my real question: Was it artful? Was it? What, did that person step up and do some artful shit? If they did, then then that to me is worth it. <laughs> that, 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 I can't I, I answer really that. <laughs> that, that person sitting in the front row caught it. I'm sorry for you. I'm sorry you were embarrassed. I'm sorry that that happened. If he stepped up and did some art push it to surprise a room full of people, then is that not well, worthwhile? Do you want me to answer the question? Artist. I don't Chris, know. Sure, go for it. it Chris, is. let's say that this poet is not Nas and this is not Ether. Okay. <laughs> 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 that oh, I don't get it. Did, did he did he call <laughs> out kidding. names though? Did he call oh, out did he call out names? Yeah. Well, um just to give a backstory for poor Chad over here. <laughs> so, I'm just ki- I was kidding. I was kidding. I just <laughs> Okay. So um like listen, he didn't call out names, but it was very apparent because she had already performed that poem, which quote unquote she did not know was offensive to him. Do you believe um, her? Earlier in the slam. I do. do you because her? You do. I, I've heard Would the poem. Would I believe her? Would Chris I do. And I believe I've her? heard the poem. I, I, don't I, I don't both know. poems. I can't make an educated guess if I don't know what poems they are. I mean, it's like... I mean, I guess I'd have to hear, but it's just like... Are, are, are it you was. sure she didn't know what she was doing or, or at least have some second thought about it? I mean... Because he was there well, when listen, she read it, right? You would, def- you would definitely have to reach out to her. But I think gotcha. that the poem... Let's get her on the show. Would- Chad, reach out. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the moment which she was writing about, technically she was saying, you know what, this was my experience, but you know what, boom, I'm coming back and I'm empowered over it. I'm not going to sit here and take it like a sucker. Th- when I hear that poem, she performs it often. That's how I feel. I've clapped. I've, I've called her my baby's father. I mean, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Um, like I said, I think that the error is not about the response because as poets, we're all responding to something. That's neither here nor there, right? The 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 way that it w- there's a difference between intent and what actually happens, okay? And I think that people need to own up to that, but I also think that we also need to be cognizant that it may not be the fault of anyone else but the person who harmed you. Like, does that make sense? I you know yeah, I'm just, yeah, I, I I can't make I can't make an informed decision unless I heard how the how the poem went you know I mean Jason it's very simple if you tell me I have a big forehead and I and I get upset about it that's, am yeah. I gonna be mad at Chad because you told me I have a big forehead and you said that's I'm proud of everybody have a big forehead you and that you need to stop <laughs> spreading my business everywhere I mean, just joking like, well hold on if you had a big forehead I like, don't feel safe everybody here everybody knows <laughs> I don't feel safe. But who who is really spreading is your it? business? It's like his business is out. The forehead's big, you know. What I mean? But that's what I'm saying. Like maybe I don't want to talk about my big forehead. Maybe I'm sensitive about it, right? But I don't think that I think that my issue should be with Jason. It shouldn't be with Chad because Jason jumped on the mic and said, "Dd and her five star forehead." I mean, you know. <laughs> oh my. Come on. This it is would be for me to take Jason outside real quick and have a conversation. We or have something. to have a conversation. Is it a five head? Does it go beyond four? It's a five head? Let's not talk about my forehead. <laughs> getting, back, getting back to what I think Jason's trying to get at, I would sum it up like this, you know, as far as, I, because I, I have some limited knowledge of the poet, you know, that everyone's asking about, did this person know they were, you know, making an attack? Did they, th- did they think they were going to hurt somebody? I just think it's the philosophy if you stick your head up as any kind of artist who writes from a viewpoint of anything 
that could offend anybody. I've said the most benign stuff that offends other people. I've I've taken harmless photos that people have like sent me death practically sent me death threats over. If you, and the philosophy is, if you stick your head up enough, if you stick out your head up enough times, you're going to get hit by life, by people's perspectives, and any artist should be aware of that. <laughs> but 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 there's a little bit of etiquette in that. I mean, one of the things that I said in this meeting, and I was there, was. Um, I mean, I read a, I, I hear a lot of poems that offend my sensibilities. I appreciate the conflict of that. And some of my best poems have been response poems to individuals who don't even know I wrote the response poem in general, even wrote it about them. I attack the idea. I, I go for the artist. idea. <laughs> <laughs> because of what? You're an artist. I because well I also probably because you might accuse me of playing it safe but I don't feel it's necessary for me to call out anybody and if I think the person's idea is crap and I write a good poem about it I want to promote the idea rather than promote an artist who isn't worth my time to get into a shouting match over you know words have have a way of preserving if they have validity if people are just saying something to be in the moment and just like getting hollowbacks for nothing you know it's it, it, that has its own short lifespan too, and that's what you—that's what you have to do. And I, I think, at the very least, the guy who Didi is talking about, who wasn't Naz or whoever, to just tell no, you no, 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 shit, <laughs> shit. I really, I really got borrowed some CDs from you. Do, do you still have CDs? Hey, we'll send you some cassettes. How's that? <laughs> I got five eight tracks. <laughs> so I thought you borrowed my disc, man. MP3 is the new eight track. Oh, <laughs> oh god! I, I just said, let me borrow some, some CDs, please. I gave myself I so much rope. To to the library. Oh my god! I gave myself so much rope to hang myself with. I'm taking you all with me. <laughs> Jason, we need a drum roll or something, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, God. But that's... But... There it is. That's good. Seriously, if you look, if you, seriously, if you look at my profile... If you look at my profile pic right now, that woman is whispering in my ear. I don't know how you do it. How do you hey, Chad, is it Tupac or Tupac? <laughs> I prefer his digital underground days, fucker. Anyway. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, my. You're a public enemy guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I remember that. You and I had that conversation. Uh, I just... Uh, Oh god! Uh, yeah, yeah, no. Pu public Enemy. Pu public Enemy is uh, featured in the next rap flashback, right, Chris? Boom! Yes, it is. Shameless name plug. Drop, What's the name, flashback? Name, name drop and a spoiler and a plug. There awesome. you go. There you go. It's not a spoiler. I'm telling not you, spoiler, I don't want people yeah. to get excited for it. Come on, I'm not going to tell teaser. you. What I, I meant to say teaser. It's right? our one year it's anniversary. It's, a, it's our uh, official birthday. The rap flashback. Yes. Happy birthday, oh. Jesus. The rap flashback turns one this week. <sighs> this week. That we started funny. last April. We're, we're, we're now into our 12th episode. It's going to be fun. We, we, we've got a good one lined up for y'all. Rap Flashback, your old school hip-hop fix at jplineproductions.com. <laughs> Find us on YouTube. We are also Google searchable, I believe was the term. Mr. Gatto used earlier. Searchable. Google searchable. Google searchable. I, I will, I will write a dedication poem to any of you or an attack poem to anyone you want me to attack for anyone who can make He Said Naz a new hashtag on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it is a new hashtag. I just, uh, uh, I'm trying to make it Google searchable. Google searchable. Google searchable. Okay. Before you guys laughed at me and reminded me I'm turning 42 in a month, let's... Um, I, I like the hollaback for nothing myself, but go ahead. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> okay, back on point, guys. Uh, but, uh, um, basically... <laughs> powers that be. All right, come on, Chad. Say what you got to say. I'm going to mute basically, everybody. Basically, I'm I think... Let I Chad think talk. Yes, you Actually, should. No, I'm just going to mute I'm Jason. All, I'm all for attacking the idea, and I think where Didi, where Didi was trying to make the point is that the person... Didn't really attack. Would, would you agree? Would you agree with my assessment of what you said, Didi? That uh, the person attacked the poet more than he attacked the idea. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. And I think, I think it's going to take a lot to repair the poetry poetry community. And I would even go back to what one of you were. I think it was Didi that talked about 
I think all of you had touched on it, saying that Boston is too small. What happened if Boston doubled in size? What would we do except we would probably have even more sensitive spots if, like, people, like, walked from one end of the lo now larger city to the other just to go to a poetry venue? I, I think it would make us even more sensitive as we stand at this point. But I, don't know, I, don't know, I just don't know if bigger is better in this case. The question is, where are the safe spots Why and where are the spots that aren't safe? Is there spots that are in Boston that aren't safe to go? Is there spots well, to I've, decided, to go? I've decided to not go to any open mics or poetry slams in Chad knows, and I have made a public statement because okay. I, I just feel like, yeah, there have been times where, um, especially right after that incident happened at the Lizard Lounge, there was a time that I went to a slam house and I had written a brand new poem, and it wasn't in. It was a response poem, but it was a response to what was going on in Ferguson. And I felt like there was a lot of white people in the room, mm -hmm. and I didn't feel comfortable because they had already made a statement about not offending people. And I was like, this may. I had to think about it, and I said, wow. And so I had already put my name on the open mic list, so I had to read some old shit. And I said, you know, this is reading. I had to read something that was safe, quote like, unquote. Ferguson's right? your old stuff. No, 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 I mean, I, 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 I missed it. Got you. I see. I see. Got you. Right. So, like, I probably recited a love poem or something, and I'm not even in love. You see how that worked out? And now I'm stifled, right? Because That's messed up. You should have read the Ferguson poem. Well, I should have. Who and could that possibly so offend except racist? Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, totally. You should have totally read that poem. Right, but because of the whole hot spot, and, and this is not this is a safe space, and we will call you out, and da da da. And you know, it's funny because the the poem actually does well in other spots, but because there were so many people from but the established need to Cambridge, most. who's not black friendly, um, I said, you know what, I just I'm not gonna read this. I'm not gonna do it. And I was actually taken aside and said, you know, we don't want you to feel like you can't be in the same space. I said, what does that even mean? I, Did you I don't tell know him that, that you means. didn't read your Ferguson poem because you didn't feel safe? I actually, I actually said that. I, I made the statement right then to and there. To which they replied, what would they say? Everyone looked at me with a blank stare. Awesome. You should have read the goddamn that, poem. Yeah, I should have read the fucking like, poem. We need a clap. We need a clap there. We need a clap there, Jay. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait for it. You'll be on the ball, man. You'll be on the ball. There you go. There Thank you. Go. I was, I've been waiting for that for the past six months. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thanks. No, you, sh you should have read it, though. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm just of the general belief and the strong general belief that when it comes to that type of stuff, like, people don't want to talk about it, and that's why it stays as bad as it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, I, poetry I to me is the perfect, perfect, perfect way to... Get well, then I definitely about that. digress with you because if that's the case, then and if we take away the fact that this gentleman, uh, you know, attacked the person, if you talk about what he's talking about, that's a conversation in itself that should be had. Whether or not marginalized people can then turn around and marginalize someone else, I mean, I don't know. And so it's, that's why I'm saying I don't know. I'm not saying it can be done or it shouldn't be done. What I I'm just saying think is it's I don't the only know. Way. So, no. It's the, only way the only to fix it. it's the only way to fix it. Yeah, I mean, you can't. And, I mean, how else are you going to fix racism but talking about it and, and making people understand mm -hmm. what it is that it exists? You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh no, but that's that what I'm saying. No, that's what I'm just, saying though. Right. So I'm are saying, we saying I'm the getting, same things in different ways? Or? Yeah, I think okay. that's what it is. I'm saying, okay. given a parallel, if you talk about what happened at the Lizard Lounge, then right. you're saying that that person should have been able to speak about the things he was speaking about in his poem without attacking the person. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't guess, know. But, but who are you attacking if you're talking about racism? You know what I mean? Unless, like, the Garner guy's there. You, my, <laughs> you know my, what I'm uh, saying? My yeah. poem was more about how how white people, especially in Boston, will right. say that Boston is not Ferguson. And I had to correct them um, in the poem. And actually, yeah, but, it's but one of my a, more popular That's a fundamentally poems. racist, like, you know, topic. Like, it's rooted in racism, the, the theme yeah. behind the... You know what I'm racial. saying? It's a racial topic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But that's what I'm saying. If you want to talk about intersectionalities, right. um, ho homosexuality, right, and then heterosexuality, and then the, the like, dismiss 
understanding that both of them have towards each other, right, is, is a conversation that should be talked about in Boston. But it's only appropriate if someone who's homosexual talks about it. If a heterosexual person no. talks about it, it's your no, I mean that's what you're asking me what the divide is here. No, no, I'm, I'm just, telling I mean, you. No, 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 you're right, you're right. I don't disagree that that is a divide. I just think it's BS. Um it, this is a, a a silly example, but um, professor wrote an art. Uh, Chris wrote an article recently about Kendrick Lamar to Pimp a mm -hmm. Butterfly, instant classic, and he was. I don't know. I mean, can I talk on it? Can I talk about it? You want to talk about it, Chris? Yeah, no, 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 no. Initial hesitation. Say, like, no, no, say exactly what you're going to say. Go ahead. Go ahead. I feel what you're well, saying. Well, no, all ahead. right. So, so, so he initially reached out to myself and uh, Spaceman. Shout outs to Kogan Spaceman, um, who's our third bandmate, um, and. Uh, our business partner. We we do a lot of things. We don't just make music anymore. Um, but anyway, um, yeah. So he taught you know. So he was just like, yo, I want to write about Kendrick. I want to do the review. Um, I personally shied away from the review. I wrote something else about Kendrick um, that week, um, just because there were so many of them out there. But I was like, go for it. You know what I mean? If you've got you know a unique angle, just by all means go for it. He, he specifically said, you know, he pretty much said, I'm the white guy in the group. I'm Puerto Rican for everybody out there on the interwebs. Colgan, space man, he's uh, he's a black dude. So you know we're we're you know we're missing an Asian, I suppose. Hey, any Asian MCs out there, come join us. Shapinelineproductions.com. We will listen to your demo if you still make those anymore. Send us an MP3. But uh, but yeah, he was just like, you know, do you guys would you guys rather write about this? Do you feel okay with me writing about it? Because you know, to pimp a butterfly, there's a very racial element to that album. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on there, but part yeah. of it is racism and you know just racial tensions in general. And I, I would say that. The and, entire and, fucking album is rooted in that. Yeah, and, 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 and black pride, you know. I mean, the, the yeah. biggest thing to me about to, to Pimp a Butterfly is a black pride element that is so yeah. strong for Kendrick that, you know, I love it. I love everything about it. I love the album. You know, I uh, it's not it's not something that's foreign to me that I don't identify with, you know, that I can't, you know, talk about or conceptualize or whatever. You know, it was something that I really loved the album. I wanted to talk about it, and it was a piece of art that you could not talk about it. So mm -hmm. I had to, you know, we had to write a review. We had to do something about it. And, we, and I love those first two pieces about it that we did. You know, you, uh, Ivan did this piece talking about is Kendrick immediately a top five person in hip hop? Not because, immediately. Not immediately. After the pimp no, of well, I mean, I've been out for think, a while, but go ahead. But I think, but I think because of Butterfly, that changed everything. You know what I'm saying? Like he was a he was a, a big person on hip hop. But as soon as Butterfly came out, that changed everybody's perspective, including your own. You know that that made that question worthwhile. Anyway, that was the piece that Ivan did. And you know then, what, you know, oh, sorry. You know, I was just gonna say, you know what I like about, um, and this is rooted to what we're talking about, is because the last. I mean, who, I mean, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but the last part of the the. I mean, throughout the whole album, he's reading a poem. He's reading a poem. Yeah. Know? yeah. So yeah no shit. Cool. So that, that is completely what we're talking about, poetry and hip-hop and, and, and how they're, they're – the, the poem at the very end is kind of like what he's talking about. Like, you know, his poem just uh, made sense to everything he was talking about throughout the whole album. And he called himself a poet because he is a poet, just like hip-hop is poetry. Boom. I said it. <laughs> no, that, that's very valid. Yeah. I'm glad you tooted your own horn for that. <laughs> <laughs> no one else is going to do it. I know, right? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait one second. You're like Jackie Martin, I'm telling you. I, I want to hear Chris finish his point. But, but what I, what, what, yeah, thank you. But what I was saying was that, you know, when we first started writing the that when, we third, when the album first came out and I wanted to write a review, it was, a, it was, it made some sense that somebody else might want to write it other than me. That Colgan as a black guy in, the, in, in our group or anybody else might want to write it other than me, and I thought it might be uh, worthwhile to extend that to them. But, you know. And that to me, you know, not to get too deep and, you know, too off topic, but that to me is the solution to racism, at least in America. White people in particular need to talk about it more. Blacks and Latinos yeah, and Asians, we talk about that shit all the time. You know what I mean? We can't help it. Yeah. Uh, but, 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 but also, you know, to further expand on that, Kendrick Lamar, poetry, hip-hop in general, like that's, you know, music. Hip hop words like that it's 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 the perfect avenue for it. It's the only avenue for it. Talk. We're talking about discourse. Am I wrong? No, I, I think this is I think it's an incredible potential for hip hop that you know, we're only starting to see the second wave of it now, you know, but, uh... <laughs> I just heard the background. Yeah, I didn't uh, 
I, that's my favorite track on that album. That's oh. not my, my my favorite one is um probably uh Modern Man or uh, Institutionalized or the one where it's the Going yeah. Home. Going Home is my favorite. I think we owe that record company two hundred dollars for that one. No, it's called. McCoy. <laughs> That'll be all right. That'll be yeah. all right. Well, I'm sure it's not the first time King Kunta has been podcasted. No, <laughs> I'm believe it or not. Yeah. All right. God, I love where that. Where we at, fellas? Where we at, fellas? what do you think about that? I mean, am I, am I way off topic, or are Chris and I approaching it from the wrong perspective, or? I think that you have the right ex- perspective, but what I'm saying is, if we're talking about Boston and we're talking about poetry, no, no, you're right. and we're talking about right. Boston poetry, it's just not going to happen. People say that they want honest and open conversation, but are refusing to be open and honest with themselves. And like you said, I do agree that people should be able to talk about it. Let's converse about it. Let's open a dialogue. But as long as people say, oh, no, 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 your way of thinking is just the wrong way. It, you, If you can't understand my walk with homosexuality, if you're just going to be heteronormative, and and it's like okay, but like, how does the person then break out of that? And is there something wrong with being hetero? I don't know. And so, I how how am I going to know if no one will talk about it? And and then when you speak about it, I read all these statuses that are like indirect and subliminals that are like, if you don't know how you're offending me, then I don't have time to teach you. What's that? That's <laughs> like, aggressive. You know, like, that's, you know that's I think that's, that's the most petty thing you've ever said in your life. You know. And and I and I think that we all need to make sure that um, we communicate with each other, especially what's going on right now um, with the Black Liberation Movement. I, I wish somebody, I wish I would see somebody say, "I don't have time to teach anyone," and that's problematic in itself. You know, what we yeah. need is more education, not less talking. So yeah, I agree. Makes that's what sense. I meant to say. Is that I think you are on target. I think um, it there is a parallel between poetry and hip hop and they're right on target as especially as far as the battle part of it goes but i think that also where rap differs from poetry is that there's a raw honesty that there isn't in poetry people think that because they're in touch with their feelings when they write it down in their journal and their flip books uh, <laughs> and that when they share it that's real shit no real shit is talking about these real topics like you know what yeah. i'm saying like and and being Once honest <laughs> But who am I? I'm just a person that's like, you know, quiet and reserved. I mean. You are the D.D. Delgado. You're our special guest tonight. Yeah, we're really enjoying You're doing a fantastic job. Too. Shout out to D.D. Delgado. D.D., plug yourself. I called um, you G.D., I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> I'm just a regular person. Um, we have the Society of Urban Poetry, Soup Poets. There you go. And uh, we can be found on www. What is that to me? W's? Wait, hold on. www.soupoets.com. We're on Twitter at, at Soup Poets, and you can find us on Facebook. Like our page. Um, we have some things coming up. Uh, Mass Poetry Festival. We have the AXO. We have a whole bunch of things coming up. So just check our page often and stay stay tuned, you know? What's the website again? It was a little, uh, go ahead. Ambiguous. <laughs> www.souppoets, I'm sorry, soupboston.com. Soupboston.com. Right. No, that was a little yeah, background you noise. You can when you go said to it right about. now. That's what you just should do. Just want to make sure everybody heard, yeah. And and when, are the events? when are the events? Give us some dates. Give us some dates and times. Boston area, Greater Boston. What's up? Oh, goodness. Oh, so uh, I think May 8th, we're performing at Maggie's Bar and Lounge in Quincy, Massachusetts, for all you South Shore lovers. Um, and all of us will be there. That's Tuan Fawn. That's myself, Didi Delgado. That's Matt Parker, Nava the Butterfly, Hannah Brown. So that's our big show coming up. Nice, nice. Um, I got a question for everybody. Uh, Are you breathing? Chad, Chad said that, well, two things, two things. Um, there's a fundraiser Chad wants to talk about. But he also said that slam poetry is a marketing ploy? Or some along that? those lines. I, I want to hear, well, I wanna hear what is. Jason and Chris and Didi have to feel. And, and to all you slam poets, tweet us at JP Lime, at Oddball Magazine, at, excuse me, at Oddball Magazine, um, at Didi Delgado. No, not yet. At Soup Poets. At Soup Poets. There you go. Tweet us your I, thoughts, I, please. It was only a second ago. I said, said it's marketing before. It gets people in the house. It gets people to bring five friends to say, be judges. And, Absolutely and the not. What? 
Absolutely she not. She said, hell to the nah. I'm sa- it's it's separate of perform of the performance poetry. I I find a diff- I find that performance poetry performed and the slam event itself are two different things. Most people diss slam poetry and they've never actually been to a slam. They go to the Cantap open mic. It's like oh god. It's a uh, yeah. So they suddenly turn British too. But um, it's, <laughs> it's, it's 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 unbelievable how many people how very few people have actually stayed for a slam at the Cantab when it's like dude just stay for the show if you don't like the slam. Good God! It, uh, I have to go home and go to work the next day. You know, I can't be here till one thirty either. Go, uh, just listen to the poets for God's sakes. You're, 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 you're hating the game. You're, you're, you're hating the game, but you're hating the players by default too. I should go to the oh, cancer. Yeah. I haven't been there a minute. Slam, slam poets tweet us. Slam poets tweet us. Actually, and slam poetry is, is a fantastic cool idea. It's a fantastic idea to get people into the house and stay there. It's a fantastic event thing. I'm not saying that. that I'm not saying that is a bad thing. But it is what You're it is. You're hating the game, Chad. Kind of yeah. I, 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 I don't have, a, I don't have a, I don't have a hand in the game. I don't. I, I probably, <laughs> oh Jesus God! I just heard that. That is a walking, talking hashtag. Yeah, uh, sorry, boys. That's I another six hundred dollars. <laughs> Back to fuck up, Jason. <laughs> oh, there you go. So you're an early '90s kind of hip hop guy. I get it. I get uh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little nice and smooth, public again. I don't say. I, I'm just gonna say that I don't mean that as an insult. I just mean it is. It is. I don't what think it anybody is. in hip hop took it as an insult. Yeah, we, we definitely. <laughs> <talk about that. laughs> I'm, talking, I'm talking about the slam comment, you freak. <laughs> I don't feel safe anymore. You just call me a freak. <laughs> Oh, God. There's, there's no safe spaces on this podcast. This apparently not a safe space. <laughs> no, but, uh, honestly, what, where is a safe space in Boston? How do we create one? I, 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 it depends on your definition of safe space. I do my best to keep... I, I'm sorry to jump into this running, but I, I, have some, I have some thoughts on this. And I... Uh, as a confession to make on the definition of... It seems that the definition of safe space right now is that you're not only safe from bodily harm. Like, I've had to throw people out who were uh, making advances towards, like, some of the... some women at Stone Soup. This happened almost, ten, like, eight years ago. And it wasn't a funny situation, and I was put into an uncomfortable situation about this because it was people who were friends of Jack Powers, and it, I, it was the only person I ever, like, really fully banned and been like, dude, this is kind of disgusting. You, you kind of have to go. You, you have to go. And since then, I've done my best. When I first went there, there wasn't any woman over under the age of like 75 that was there. And generally, it was like one woman in the audience. If there's one thing, if I were to die tonight, I would be proud of myself saying that I did. Is I try, I made Stone Soup a place where men and women can go to for the for the most part with minimum problems and next to no problems. And in the case of like Dee Dee's event this past Monday, have the time of their lives and no know. no worries whatsoever. I think Jason just had an okay time. I don't think he had the time of his life. Oh, my. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Now, safe spaces seem to... The definition of safe space, on the other hand, seems to mean that you're not... You not only have to not feel threatened by the people around you, which should be a given anywhere, but it seems like you have to be safe from the idea of opposing ideas. And if that's the case, if people can agree with that, that seems to be the the overlying definition from people, then I, Stone Soup is not really a safe space to me because my challenge has been to pass Stone Soup on to younger minds and to get different perspectives in, it's perspectives, perspectives in there. A perspective? I don't, I, new, new outlooks. New, new, new outlooks, new life views, new ways of, of approaching things. I can only approach certain things. I can only approach Stone Soup in certain ways. I really try to expand my horizons, and that's very scary. And I think I, I can. I, I actually sympathize with the guy who attacked the poet because ultimately, I think we come from the same source. We deal with it very differently. It's the idea of feeling relevant, and I think you're going to get a lot of that as the as the scene ages more poets pass away or pass on or just leave because they can't stay in the city or they just leave the scene because there's nothing there. The people who are going to stay on could grow more bitter, could look at the younger people, even if it's the same if you, even if it's people who are the same race as them, the same sexual orientation as them, they're just going to look around, they're just going to feel like, I oh, God, I don't relate to these people. 
I feel irrelevant. And my challenge day to day, in addition to making Stone Soup relevant for people of any age that come in there, and the the proud of the one of the other things I'm proud of is that the people who are older and would have probably ten years ago scoffed at the idea of like Slam and other people coming, they have the time of their lives too. You know, there's not a single person. There were a lot of people in the front row who came early, at like 50 and over, who loved Didi Delgado and loved everything they saw that night. And that makes me that makes me happy that I was able to even have a small role in that. Didi had a larger role in that night than I did, and that's fine too because it's I just because to... I have larger boobs than you, Chad. It's fine. I'm aware. <sighs> hey, man. We but wear the flat, Jason. Come on, man. I thought I was hashtagging. Uh, you said I was hashtagging oh her. Oh my God. God. There you go. And I'll, I'll just come to conclude. I'll just come to. I'll What's just come to, for Chad's boobs. I'll come. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not a drum roll. I'll come. Uh, there it is. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really gonna, I'm really gonna be. I'm just, I'm really gonna put it to a close and just say that I think. Oh, God. Anyway, the wind blows. Let's <laughs> keep your day job. Thank you. All right, bring us home. Chad. I'm gonna bring it. I'm just gonna bring it home for myself. And then everyone can pile on me later. Saying that, I just think that you know a lot of the core of the problems that poets of all ages, people coming in here, they just want to matter, and it's in it in a scene as large and diverse as it's become more diverse than I've ever seen in the last ten years. It that's really a challenge. I really try and make sure that any poet that comes onto the stage feel like they matter because in my mind that they do, and it's and in that it's kind of challenges me because the younger generation are moving up, they're moving in. And I, I sense that I sense that reaction. I sense that the reaction that's probably that guy at the lizard lounge had. He probably probably not the same exact thing, but it probably comes from the same source. I believe. And I think if we come to, like, we come to it from that that everyone just wants to matter. I think it, it's less about like <sighs> it's less about having people tear at each other. Because they don't agree with each other entirely, or because their worldviews don't mesh up, but because they both want to matter, and you can find a way to. I, I'd like to find a way to say that everybody matters, that everyone matters, that everyone has their chance to go up there, even if it's only for three minutes, even if it's only for a short moment of time that you're in Boston, that you mattered, and you did what you could. I don't know if I totally all totally lost you. I'm looking at the side chat that thankfully the audience can't see, and I probably <laughs> have. But I tried to have a no, serious man, that moment. Was, that was, that no, was I good. feel you. I feel, no, that but was, I like what you said, really though. Word, man. That's you're word. basically saying that, yo, Stone Soup isn't necessarily a safe house, but you can come and say what you say because we appreciate it. You matter. Your voice is, you know, your 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 voice is welcome. That's Stone Soup. Yeah. Yes. 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 That's exactly it. All right. Cool. Cool. I got everyone saying that ratchet ass, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and and Dee, like why don't you mention why don't you mention more places that you've been to than I have that you feel might qualify as that? As what? As being like a place where you can go to speak. I mean, it, I can't be the only place, or I can't be the only one place. I I, I won't toot my own. You know, I'm not going to be a hater. I will mm -hmm. say that there there is one place, one. Damn, it's uh, total. It's it's in Jamaica Plain. It's called If You Can Feel It, You Can Speak It. I feel like I've gone there, and I think that the host of that venue pretty much have their shit together. But then they then again they've also been doing it for five years, and their rule or slash guideline is, if you do not like what the poet said, go talk to the poet. Don't come talk to me because I yeah. can't do nothing about it. I just told y'all this is, is that an the open. Answer? So I think I, just, just make that the rule everywhere? I, I personally think it should be the rule everywhere, but also when you talk about like the audience response, I think that um, also, too, certain people shouldn't come to the venue if they're going to disagree with the guidelines because I think it's hurtful when you're talking about that everyone can have a space to get up and say whatever it is they want to say. When people, I mean, if you don't want to clap, don't clap. But don't like groan and make all sorts of it's just ridiculous. I thought that we were all grown here, you know, so well, maybe there should be an age limit. Man, I want I want to close with that poem so bad that I wrote about Stone Soup, but I don't know. I just I just want to say that the oddball so podcast, the, the oddball show is the unsafest safe space. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I like it.
That's hashtag the oddball show. Sounds scary. Hashtag it. Yeah. Yeah. Unsafe safe space. I'll hashtag it. With a hashtag at the end. Let's flip Maybe that should around. be the episode's official title <laughs> after this. <laughs> unsafe safe space. No one says the hashtag at the end. Uh, you you got to say that out loud. <laughs> Safe Safe Space brought to you by Trojo the Brand now like with that. holes. Like, what the hell? Oh, hey, can, I kick the, can I kick the poem off to end the show? Please read a poem. I need a poem right now. All right, all right. All right. This, is, this, is, this is about what happened at Stone Soup a few weeks ago. I think back. this is going to be a great poem. All right, ready? Here we go. You can Are find you calling us on... out names? No, man. No, no. Uh, you can find us on Oddball Magazine, uh, Jagged Thoughts number 68, watching the cameraman leave the set. You ready? Yep. All right. I realized something as the cameraman left the set. An older man with not a lot left. A skeptic of sorts who missed breakfast, but why he said what he said, I get, but don't get. Imagine he had the best intentions. After he left, I'm still thinking about what he said and why he said it. And I think what he said, he meant it, but maybe in a different way. As the poet got off the stage, the poet said, respect the game and respect the age. Read and write poetry for its healing vibes to heal communities to change our lives. What I think the cameraman meant to say in response was to remind us to show respect to each and everyone, and I get that, because the right leg and the left leg walk the same body, and we are all poets. Some flows are slow and low, and some are the nicest, and then there are flows that are villanelles and sonnets. But as the 80-year-old said what he said, something sunk in long after he left. After he left, people started talking. We all agreed that what he said was wrong, and I thought totally effed, but for real, I understand what he meant. Respect everyone. No matter skin tone, home or no home, lost and alone or watching the throne, the stoned, the sober, the drunk, and the rest, all tribes are on quests. The beasties and the westies, lefties, righties, easties, man, as poets, we got to learn, learn and teach the people that poetry is unifying but can divide. It can elevate or deflate. It can bust your ego in the third eye or it can define you. It can form a legacy before you die. Your words are forever. They remain after the game. Unite poets, war gamers, artists, musicians, those with the dying wish to live within the bruises. Those obtuse, rude, confused dudes and ladies, remember this. When you throw shade on shadows, light never gets in. When you place hate in your mind or on the shit that you write, then you are living differently than the poet way of life. So 80 years or 60 years, there's a similar perspective. But the cats in the game now, we left bigotry and hate at the door before we wiped our feet and took seats on the stage of the 13th floor. But you want to know what the truth is? There's nothing more stupid and useless than fighting about race and the color of our faces. We all share the same space. So that's what I learned as the cameraman left. I want to say big up to the poets who read and much respect. And to the speaker, the featured man, he brought down the building and showed us that life is really for living. And that poetry is to uplift, to teach the people there's no good and evil, there is no second sequel. Real talk, poets, we got one life, so let's unite and uplift, instead of denigrate and deny. Take this life's punches standing, eventually we'll all be landing on the same moon, the same tomb, six feet where we're standing. Don't waste your time throwing shade or promoting hatred, because we all one day are going to exit the stage we created. Real talk. Where's the clapping? Just me. He's got to clap. Jason. Oh, Jason, that was fantastic. You want to do my horn? That was good. Yeah. There you go. There you, you go. Saw that. I saw that coming yesterday before the podcast started. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I think that was an excellent way to end our inaugural podcast. Does Does everybody agree? Any dissenters out there? I said dissenters. Dissenters. You said dissenters. Okay. I'm, I'm a dissenter. Okay, when you saying dissent, are you saying D-I-S or D-E-S? <laughs> I don't want to diss anybody. Dis what are you talking dissers? about? Dissers? <laughs> yeah, I mean, does anybody disagree? Like, I think we're good. I think that I was think a good way good. to end. I think we've touched on safe spaces, and we've come to the conclusion that maybe there are no safe spaces. If you, don't, if you think you might be offended, stay home. And if you get offended, hey. Talk to the talk to the person it. who offended yeah. you. Exactly. Yeah, I establish I, I establish my Didi, thank you for coming on our show. Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for fucking having me. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah. Get up, Didi. Get up, Didi. Yeah. This, uh, this was the oddball show, our inaugural podcast. You can find out more about us at 
www.jplimeproductions.com, www.oddballmagazine.com. Uh, Didi, www. Soupboston.com. Soupboston.com, and we will be having these podcasts uh, fairly regularly throughout the course of the year, so please feel free to tune in. Tweet us at JP Lime, at, at Oddball Magazine, at uh, Soup Poets. Yeah. Is that right? At Soup Poets. And, I think uh, you did a great job just doing that just now. Thanks. All right, cool, cool. And, uh, yeah, and, and, and we're, <laughs> we, uh, you know, we're. We're glad we're glad to have everybody out there listening to us. We hope you come back. Hit us up. Hit us up, man. Final, final, final footnote. Uh, consider clicking the link that's below the description of this uh, video in you on YouTube and donate to uh, Didi Delgado's um, GoFundMe campaign. Awesome. We had awesome. the part the the show we keep on alluding to this past Monday was uh, an amazing fundraiser for Didi and. We did an amazing job, but uh, the money is going towards a medical procedure and the recovery of such. So she, uh, you know, you can always use more money with doctors. Believe me, I know. Greedy. You bastards. guys are so romantic and whatever. <laughs> yeah, it was really, it was really a great time having you on the uh, on the show. Thanks so much. Yeah, no problem. Fun. It was awesome. good time. We hope to have you back. Yes. Yeah, oh. You guys are so awesome, son. <laughs> I didn't really like it that much. Oh, <laughs> is that Chris? Is that Chris? Uh, who also uh, made fun of my forehead? That's <laughs> professor. What about your forehead? I love your forehead. I didn't say anything about your forehead. He called him a five head, man. I called her a five. Yeah, All right, everybody. Me. Hey, we're, we're signing off. I am Scholar for <laughs> Chad Rento. Didi Delgado, Professor, and Jason Wright, Oddball Magazine, J. Blind Productions. We will see you next time. Thanks for having us. Good night, guys. Good night, Good night. Space America, wherever you are. Really, where are you? <laughs>